So, Wheeler's method. Wheeler's method is a numerical technique for approximating the solutions to differential equations. Um, it's still you, it's, I mean, centuries old, but it still gets used today. And it's also been the basis of more advanced numerical methods. Um, and Euler's method is based on linearization. Um, so say we have dy dx equals f of x comma y. And we have, we have some initial condition. Let me, let me see. Y of x sub zero equals y sub zero. So the solution to this differential equation is some kind of curve. And you're given some information, y of x sub zero equals y sub zero, So you're given a point on the curve and you are given this derivative function. I mean, you're given f of x comma y, which gives the derivative of y with respect to x. So as I say, Euler's method is based around linearization. Um, if we have a point and we have the slope of the line of um, the curve at the point, we can find the equation of the tangent line. And we have both those things. I mean, we're given the point, and then we can plug that point into the F and we can get to the derivative from that. So we have all of the information we need. To linearize around the point. And we then sort of, we repeat this linearization process. Let me slightly uh, try to make this line slightly neater. So clearly at some point, this line stops becoming a good approximation of the curve. Like down here, we have an approximation of the curve, but the actual value of the curve is kind of far away. So this is a local approximation technique we can approximate near the initial condition. The Euler's method says, okay, we're trying to approximate the curve. So maybe this point there, we think it's on the curve. Or to be more precise, we think that it's hopefully near the curve. So we take this point on our linearization, and now we can linearize around this point. 
we'll call this point x1 comma y1. If we stick x1 comma y1 into this function f, we get a derivative. It's only an approximation, of course, but we get a derivative. And once we have a point and a derivative, we can linearize. And maybe our linearization looks something like that. And now we pick a point. And we say, okay, we think this points on the curve, or at least we think this point is hopefully near the curve. So we'll linearize around it. We'll take this point, x2, comma, y2, and we can plug it into f of x comma y and we'll get the derivative. And once we have a point and a derivative, we can linearize. And maybe our linearization looks like that. And that's Euler's method. It's just repeated linearization. So let's uh, try to nail this down. We'll treat Euler's method as having a constant step size h. And what we mean by that is, okay, we have this curve that we're trying To approximate on some interval. We're starting here and we're ending here. And we're going to fix some constant h and we're going to cut this interval in. for these equal sized pieces. So we start here, we linearize, we get an approximation on this piece. Then we go to the second piece, we linearize and we get an approximation on the second piece. We go to the third piece, we linearize, we get an approximation on the third piece, and so on. And you know, maybe eventually our approximation becomes quite bad or maybe it remains pretty good, but we just keep doing this. I mean, at this point, our approximation is quite bad. Going back to what I said a few seconds ago, we've got pretty glaring error here. Um, but anyway, we... Keep this process going and all of these little, all of these intervals are of the same size. H, 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 H. And that's the step size. And theoretically, Euler's method is giving you a piecewise linear function. So 
we're getting a linear piece, a straight line here, a straight line here, a straight line here, and so on. Uh, that's not how Euler's method would be used in practice. In practice, Euler's method is giving us the joints of the piecewise defined function. Because this is all we need, like if we're using technology to produce a graph and we get 10,000 points, well, we just tell Wolfram Alpha or whatever to graph those 10,000 points and then connect them with straight line segments. So in practice, we're not bothering to write down all of these little piecewise defined functions. We're just keeping track of points, x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on. And Euler's method is easy to write down the pseudocode for. Although having said that, I made a typo. We have this um, differential equation, dy dx, and we have an initial condition. We have an x0 and a y0. Then x1 is going to be x0 plus eight. where this H is that fixed step size. And Y1 is going to be Y0 plus H times F of X0 comma Y0. And then this pattern is going to repeat. X2 will just be X1 plus H. Finding the X's is simple. We just keep adding H. Y2 will be gotten from Y1, just like Y1 came from Y0. So Y2 will be Y1 plus H times F of X1 comma Y1. So then this pattern can repeat as often as you want it to. You start with X0, Y0. You use those to find X1, Y1. Then you use X1, Y1 to find X2, Y2, and so on. I mean, if you wanted to write down X sub N, it's x sub n minus one plus h. Y sub n is y sub n minus one plus h times f of x sub n minus one y 
sub n minus one. And let me quick real quick. We want to show you this, and the thing I want to show you is sitting in my in bar. So cooperate. Why is this always so slow? Here we go. Download. There we go. So I uh, looked at Euler's method to solve this differential equation. Um, a few remarks. This differential equation isn't written as dy dx equals f of x comma y, but it could be. You can subtract the three x y over to the right, and then you can divide by x squared plus one. So if you do that, yeah, just like what I said, um, we can rewrite this so that let's zoom in so you can actually maybe see this. We can rewrite this differential equation so that dy dx is by itself on the left-hand side. Here, so I didn't bother teaching you how to solve this differential equation. It's one of those things that textbooks will teach you how to do, but then you can never use it in any real world situation. So sort of what's the point? Um, but if we did solve it exactly, this is the curve we would get. And then I started by letting H be one. So we have x zero, y zero. X one is going to be x zero plus h. So x one is going to be zero plus one or one. Let me zoom in a little more. Y1 requires a bit more effort. Y1 is Y0 plus H times F of X0, Y0. So we have to stick X0, Y0 into this equation to come up with this to come up with f of x zero comma y zero. But once we do that, y one is y zero plus h times f of x zero comma y zero. It ends up being one four. And now we just repeat this process. Um, we're at x equals one. We add h to x to get our new x, which is two. Then we'll take one comma four and we'll stick it in here to get f of x comma y. 
And once we have done that, we have all that we need to calculate x2 comma y2. And once we've calculated x2 comma y2, we can calculate x3 y3, x4 y4. Let's see. I think I said somewhere, yeah, that we're looking at the interval from zero to four, which is why I stopped here. We've, X is going from zero to four. And if we graph this thing, as I said, what we've actually found is points. We found this point, x0, y0, this point, x1, y1, this point, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4. But once we found the point, it was easy to have Desmos connect those points with straight line segments for us. And then, I mean, this obviously not a great approximation. I mean, y is taking on values around four, around two, we're getting errors here. I mean, our error here is like around a hundred percent. It's a very bad error. Um, in general, if you shrink H, you can improve Euler's method. So I'm not going to go through all of the details, but we shrink H to 0 0.5. That's how it's in green, if you're assuming you're not uh, colorblind. But this new curve that we get with this H is the curve that I'm tracing with my cursor. And you see it's already significantly better, a significant improvement. Like this wasn't even close down here, whereas this is sort of tracing along the curve pretty nicely. And then this picture is getting kind of crowded, but if we let H be 0 0.1, this is now a very good approximation. I mean, 0 0.1 is following the curve extremely nicely. So in general, letting H be smaller will reduce the error and make Euler's method more accurate. I mean, there are practical limitations. I mean, if you're even on a computer, there's a limit to how small you can let H be and still perform the algorithm in a uh, respectable time frame. But, but letting, H be small reduces the error. This is a general statement. It is possible to find kind of bad example was for letting H be small. Um, because if the smaller H is, the more steps you're performing, the more chance there is for rounding error to enter the 
problem. So it is possible to come up with really bad differential equations where letting H be small causes really bad rounding error and Euler's method can't be made to work nicely. But this is a good general statement. Um, Let's just talk briefly about this error. Wheeler's method has two sources of error. What we call local error and what we call cumulative error. So local error comes from the fact that, well, that Euler's method is based on linearization and linearization is just an approximation. So you've got, you've got your real curve, and you've got your linearization and your linearization, at least in this picture, it looks like it's doing a pretty good job of estimating the curve, but it's just an approximation and there is some error. Cumulative error comes from the fact that only your first linearization is, is a perfect linearization. I mean, what we'd like to do is we'd like to linearize around this point. And now we'd like to linearize around this point up here for our second linearization. We'd like to have something like that, but we can't do that. We can't linearize around this point because we don't know what that point is. That's a point on the curve and we don't have the curve. We're trying to approximate the curve. So instead of linearizing around the point we'd actually like to linearize around, we are linearizing around that point. And because we're linearizing around the wrong point, now we're going to get, we're still going to get that local error due to the fact that this is just an approximation, but we're also going to get additional error based around the fact that we're linearizing around the wrong point. So the local error, if we could linearize the way we really would like to, if we could linearize like that, we just have local error error due to linearization. Because we can't do that, we have this additional error, which is called cumulative error. And reducing H is reducing both the um, local error and the cumulative error. And that's really it for Euler's method. There's a homework assignment, which is 
um, quite, I mean, any homework assignment where you perform a, what's basically a computer algorithm by hand can't really help but be tedious. Um, but there is an assignment on this. You can do it after you take the test on Thursday. Um, someone asked about meeting me before the test. Uh, my office hours today, I mean, today I'll be in my office, but I'm pretty busy. Tomorrow I'm very free. I'll, uh, I have a nine to 10 class and then from 10 to one, I'll be around if anybody wants to meet me before the test. And if not, I will see you Thursday.